Oh, hey, you guys. Look at all of you. Welcome to Kids Church. Welcome to Kids Church Online. Let's start with a question. Are you ready? Wait, ready for what? Ready to laugh? (laughs) Ready to worship? Me, me, me. Ready to learn about God and how much he loves you? You guys, trust me, it's a lot. Ready for games? Game time! Hey! Game time! Ready to laugh? (laughs) No, you still have to wait until the end for that. You guys know how happy we are that you join us online, right? It makes us really happy. But do you know what would also make us happy? Seeing you here. Right here with us in Igorot. It's just not the same without you. But whether you're in person or online, do you know what time it is? It's time to get the party started. It's time for Kids Church. Time for Kids Church. Here we go. Church. It's time for Kid Interview, and today I'm really excited to get to interview and for you guys to get to know Evan. Evan, you want to say hi to Kids Church? Hello. All right, let's just get started. Evan, tell us how old you are, when's your birthday, and what grade are you starting in the fall? I'm nine, and my birthday is April 12th, and I'm going into fourth grade. Ooh, awesome. Great. Can you show us um, your favorite thing or at the very least something you love in your room? My most favorite thing in my room is the bed, actually. It is? <laughs> yeah. So what do you like most about your bed? Um, it's really comfortable and it has like a giant body pillow on it. So Ooh, like nice. you don't need multiple pillows to yep. put onto the bed. Oh, that's great. What is something that you have enjoyed? about this past summer? Have you gotten to do something or, yeah, what have you um, I went to I went to Texas with my family and my cousin and it was really fun. Oh, that's great. Have you been to Texas before or was this your first time? Um, I think I've been to Texas before, but when I was really little, so I didn't remember. Okay, are you a, what do you prefer, beach or pool? Oh, hmm. <laughs> maybe beach? Yeah. Evan, do you have a hidden talent? Um, I would think my hidden talent would be that I'm very funny. You are. Are you kind of the, are you the funny one of the family? Yeah. My family has one of those too. (laughs) Do you, do you tell jokes? Do you like being silly? What's your favorite way to be funny? I like to tell jokes, but I also like being silly. You do. I mostly just be silly. I love it. And I bet your family loves that too, don't they? If I were to ask you three words that best describe you, what do you, what would those be? Um, kind, encouraging, and silly. I love that God made you that way. I love that. So you've got a lot of time to think about this. You're, what'd you say? You're nine, right? Yeah. You got some time until you grow up. But when you think about when you're an adult, when you're grown up, is there anything that you are interested in doing? I would like to be... Well, I would like to be a veterinarian because I love animals. You do? Do you, yeah. do you have any animals? No. You don't? But sadly, I'm allergic to my favorite animals. Which is what? Dogs and cats. You are? Oh, that's a I'm bummer. To both of them. You are? Oh, gosh. If you could, if you weren't allergic and you could have a dog, do you have a specific kind of dog that you would like? Do you have one that's your favorite? Golden Retriever or a Husky. I look forward to seeing what your future holds, what God has for you in the future. Um, what superpower, if they were real and you could have one, what one would you want and why? Mm, I'd like to be invisible because then if I was in trouble, I could become invisible and then run away. <laughs> They'd be like, Evan? Oh wait, <laughs> where'd you go? <laughs> if you could say anything to Kids Church, just to encourage the kids, Evan, what would you want to say to them? Never give up. Good. Oh my gosh, so quick. We are done, except for one last thing. You know what's next, right? Yeah. What is it? Game time. Game time. Will you count us down? Okay. Three, two, one.
go. <laughs> What's up guys, are y'all ready for worship? Amazing, guys, as y'all know by now, another way we worship is through our, right, tithes and offering, okay? Guys, when we do this, it reminds us that God is more important than anything else we have in our lives. It also reminds us that everything we have is a gift from Him. I challenge you guys to, to even think about these things as we worship today, okay? Now, during these next couple of songs, you can put your offering in an envelope or an offering box you guys made at home, okay? Remember, you can send that to CA at any time. Meet everybody on their feet. Come on, get on up, get on up. Here we go. Let's worship y'all.
Hello, my creative friends. Yes, I called you creative because that's what you are. Today, we are going to learn more about how we are creative. Usually, we think of creativity as painting or writing or singing, and that's true. We definitely can be creative through art, but there's so much more to creativity than just painting or making music or even singing. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you're made in God's image. You see, God's creativity is indescribable. It's limitless. It goes beyond what we could ever imagine. So, if we're made in God's image, we are creative. Let's play a game together that will show you a little bit of what I mean. We're going to play a game called Creative Clouds. I'm going to show you a picture of a cloud, and you are going to have to use your creativity and imagination to guess what it looks like. All right, let's look at our first cloud. Ooh, what do you think it is? I kind of think it looks like a bird. Were you able to use your imagination to guess what it looks like? Let's look at our next one. What do you think it is? Hmm. I kind of think it looks like a dog. What about you? All right. Let's go to our next one. Ooh, this one's cool. Use your imagination. What is it? I think it looks like a feather floating up in the sky. I like that one. All right. Next one. Ooh. To me, it looks like an upside down ocean. What about you? All right. That was cool. All right, this one, I think this one looks like a big mountain on the ocean or some really big waves. What do you think? This one, ooh, this could be an animal. Oh, I think it looks like a seahorse or even a chef with a hat on it. What do you think? That's pretty cool. This one, oh, this one could be a coyote or a wolf. That's pretty cool. All right, here's our last one. Ooh, to me, it looks like a very big fish or even a whale. Awesome. That was creative. You guys did a good job using your creativity to guess what those clouds look like. And I'm sure you had some creative answers. I'm thankful God made all of us creative like him. Let's take a look at our Bible story today and see what we can learn about being creative. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 10. When the Apostle Paul wrote his letter to the believers in Ephesus, he told them, We are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now, we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. Let's see how that might play out in someone's life today. Nora Gray followed her older cousin, Sadie, around the pottery studio. Clay dust danced in the sunbeams from high up windows. So I just stay at the desk? Working at the Earth and Fire studio was Nora's first real job, and she wanted to get it right. Sadie grinned and pushed back her hair with a clay-flecked hand. Mostly. A bunch of artists have memberships here, so they can use all the equipment and materials. You'll answer questions, take calls, make orders when supplies run out, things like that. What's in there? Nora pointed to an open door near the back of the studio. Oh, yes, the closet. Nora led the way over. Sadie peered inside. Wow. The narrow room was lined on both sides with high shelves. Every shelf and every inch of floor space was cramped with a jumble of tools, containers of clay and glazes, cleaning supplies, and pieces of pottery, finished and unfinished. How do you find anything? So many people use the closet. Everyone just kind of has their own system. Nora didn't think the disaster in the closet qualified as a system, but before she could say anything. Oh, I gotta take this. Hello? Oh, hold on a sec. Where did I put my pen? Frazzled, 
Sadie checked her pockets. Nora quickly pulled a pen and notepad out of her neatly organized backpack. Would this work? Sadie snatched the pen and paper, mouthing, thank you, and headed for the desk. Nora surveyed the room. There were at least a dozen artists at work. You a butter too? Nora turned to see an older gentleman with a streak of clay in his curly white hair. His long frame bent nearly double over the nearest pottery wheel. Me? No. Oh, I think everyone's an artist of some kind. I can't even draw a stick figure. Sadie's just letting me work here till I go to college in the fall. Nelson centered a lump of clay on his wheel. You'll see me here most every morning. I'm Nelson. Nora. Real nice to have you here. I'm uh, working on a coffee mug if you'd like to watch. Nora watched, mesmerized, as the spinning clay morphed from a stodgy lump to a smooth cylinder under Nelson's practice hands. I wish I could make beautiful things like that. You want to take a turn? Sadie tried to teach me. It was a disaster. Nelson smiled, hands still working the clay. I happen to believe that God made each of us to create beautiful things that matter. You'll find your spot. Nora nodded, but she didn't think she'd ever create a piece of art that could make someone smile. Nora, I want to show you the kiln. Sadie reappeared, and Nora spent the rest of the day learning the ropes of her new job. By early evening, the studio had cleared out. You go home. I can lock up at six, just like you showed me. Well... And I can order more blue glaze, like you said. Well, if you think you got this, that would be great. I can get home early for dinner with the kids. I'm good. Go, shoo. With a wave, Sadie hurried out. Nora opened the supplier's webpage and started to order for glaze. Hmm, I bet there's still blue glaze in the closet somewhere. Nora opened the door and clicked on the light. The mess looked even worse than it had that morning. Is this glaze? Oh, it's those cans. And there's some over here and up there. Nora edged her way around, collecting cans. There's no way to know what's really here unless I can get it all together. I should clear a space. And I should stack those crates to group the colors. Every time Nora moved one can or tool, she discovered six more that needed a place to go. All the cleaning supplies can go down here, modeling tools and loops over there by the door. That's definitely trash. Oh, and there should be a spot for each artist to put their pieces that still need to be glazed. One thing led to another, and another, and another. Nora finally realized she was hungry. Hmm, where did I set my phone? Oh, here, 9.30. Nora had been so focused on organizing the closet, she had completely lost track of time. She glanced with satisfaction at the crate containing five cans of blue glaze. At least I don't need to order more glaze. The next morning, Nora arrived a few minutes late. She rushed in, apologetic. I'm so sorry, Sadie, I- Nora broke off as she saw Sadie, Nelson, and several other artists grouped around the closet door. Nora, did you do this? Um, yeah, uh, I should have asked. Nora, this is amazing! Nora took a step forward to take a good look at what she's done. Glazes and clay, tools and supplies. Everything had its own spot in a orderly rhythm. With the morning light streaming in, it did look pretty cool. Nelson grinned. Oh, it's beautiful, Nora. A real work of art. A younger woman with hair knotted on top of her head chimed in. Plus, we can find stuff now. I thought I'd lost this set of mugs. You've made our work a lot easier. Really? I guess. I thought anyone could do this. No way. You have a real gift. Can I organize the front desk? Please! I'm raising your pay. Nora happily tackled her next project. A well-organized desk. She was grateful to discover the truth of Ephesians 2.10 in her own life. We are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now, we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do.
There are so many ways each day that we can use the creativity God gave us. He can help us use it to do good things. God created you so you can be creative. Say that with me. God created you so you can be creative. Maybe you're thinking, okay, that all sounds great, but I have no clue how I'm creative. Well, think about the things you like to do, the things you're naturally good at. That can be the way that you are creative. For example, maybe you're good at drawing or songwriting or painting incredible works of art. For someone else, creativity might look totally different, like building a robot, designing cool apps and games, or making people laugh, or even inventing 127 new uses for a pool noodle. For me, it's making cool trick shots. If you're still having trouble figuring out how you are creative, ask a parent or a friend what you're good at. And we can also ask God to show us new ways to use our creativity to help those around us. Here's something we need to remember. The creativity God gives you isn't just about creating something. It's about using the unique way God has designed you to love him and others. That's what Paul meant by saying, God has created us for good works. He meant that we can use the unique way that God has designed us to show love to other people. But before you can use your creativity, you need to believe that you are creative in the first place. And I'm here to tell you that it's true. God not only made you creative, but he wants to help you use that creativity. You can trust God no matter what and you can always ask him for help. There are just as many forms of creativity as there are human beings, so don't judge your own creativity by what others do. Some of you might be great at visual arts, while others of you are great at solving problems. I bet someone watching is creative, is a creative communicator. You're good at helping others understand things, and someone else is probably good at planning your own birthday party or directing plays with your brothers and sisters or building an awesome pillow fort. The possibilities are endless. I hope that you have gotten to understand that God is creative and he made you just like him so that you can be creative too. Let's pray and then you will be able to get to spend some time together as a family talking more about what we learned today. Dear God, thank you for creating each one of us and thank you for making us creative like you. It's so cool how you gave each of us unique and different ways to use our creativity. Help us figure out how you made us creative. Then help us see the needs around us so we can use our creativity to do good works for others. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, guys. Well, friends, that concludes today's Kids Church family experience. Thanks for joining us. Ready? Here it goes. I'm light as a feather, yet the strongest person cannot hold me for five minutes. What am I? Your breath. Take care, everyone. <laughs>